Modern anesthesia is about refining and avoiding general anesthesia and utilizing regional blocks for perioperative anesthesia and postoperative analgesia as contribution to early recovery after surgery. Let's begin then with learning popliteal nerve block with the target of giving you a sound knowledge and learned anesthetic approach towards dermatomes and nerve distributions. Let's begin then. First thing first, as an anesthetist, while working on any regional block, you need to have a grasp on dermatomes and functions of the nerves you are going to block. What is the goal for which you are targeting respective nerves, right? Popliteal sciatic nerve block is all about targeting the area below knee till the toes. The sciatic nerve coming posteriorly bifurcates roughly 7 cm above the knee into pink colored tibial nerve and common peroneal nerve also called the common fibular nerve for its location in fibula area. The common peroneal nerve moves from posterior to anterior side of leg where it divides into deep peroneal nerve and the sky blue colored superficial peroneal nerve. The tibial nerve moves downwards posteriorly and gives away posterior tibial nerve which further supplies the sole which we will discuss in the ankle block in another episode. The extensions of tibial and peroneal nerve together form the sural nerve that moves downwards posteriorly and laterally around the ankle and also supplies the lateral most small toe area anteriorly as well. Note that all the nerves are sensory motor except for sural nerve which is purely sensory in nature. Now that you know the nerves respective paths, you will better relate the dermatomes and movements these nerves bring. The common peroneal supplies the lateral proximal aspect of leg before it bifurcates into deep and superficial branches. The superficial peroneal supplies the remaining anterolateral area of the leg distally marked in sky blue and extends all the way down the ankle to the dorsum of the foot and to all the toes except lateral most toe which we said was supplied by sural nerve. The area between the first and second toe is supplied by deep peroneal nerve marked in darker shade of blue. Stimulating the deep peroneal nerve results in two movements. Number one, inversion and number two, dorsiflexion. You can see the sky blue colored superficial peroneal nerve distribution. Stimulating this nerve will cause aversion of the foot. Let's see the dermatomes on posterior side now. The sural nerve area is highlighted in brown. Already discussed, it is only sensory in nature. It covers the posterior lateral area all the way down till the lateral most toe. The posterior tibial nerve covers the area on posterior medial part around ankle and running down its branches cover the sole of the foot. Stimulation of tibial nerve causes two main movements. Number one, the inversion of the foot and number two, by contracting gastrocnemius, soleus and plantar muscles, it causes plantar flexion. Wait a second, then what is this wide spared area anteromedial on the leg and running down all the way till the foot? Yes, you guessed it right, the saphenous nerve coming down from the main femoral nerve marked in green covers the medial leg and foot. This nerve is spared in popliteal sciatic nerve blocks. So it needs to be given a field block in anteromedial position around the knee joint for complete anesthesia on below knee leg. To cover the surgery area from below knee till toes, we can give popliteal sciatic block with the saphenous nerve field block. For surgeries on foot, one can give ankle block by separately blocking five nerves coming around the ankle. And now the anatomy and landmarks for popliteal block. Placing the patient in prone position, I ask the patient to flex knee against resistance of my hand. This makes a popliteal triangle and main tendons are visible. On the lateral part, the huge bulky muscle is bicep femoris. On the medial side, we have semitendinosus and semimembranosus. The base of the popliteal triangle is formed by the popliteal crease and the apex is formed by the junction of the point of two big muscles. The point of needle entry is 7 cm above the midpoint of popliteal crease and 1 cm lateral. Why this point and why a little lateral, you'll see. In comes the sciatic nerve below the muscle, slightly lateral and more under the bicep femoris muscle. 
at the junctional apex of the triangle, the sciatic nerve bifurcates into tibial and common peroneal nerve. This bifurcation point is sweet spot for single injection technique. You'll know in few minutes what I'm saying. Also running in deeper layers are the two main vessels, the popliteal artery and the popliteal vein. You don't want to go there with your needle, trust me. Now covering this sciatic nerve is epineural sheath called the locus sheath. For successful injection, you have to deliver the local within this sheath. So let's see now how these structures will be shown on ultrasound screen. Make sure you have a good lateral to medial orientation on the ultrasound machine. Laterally, superficial, this bulky muscle is bicep femoris. On the medial side, we can see the semi-tendinosis and the semi-membranosis superficially. Running right below the muscle and slightly laterally, you can see the laterally located common peroneal nerve and medial to it is the tibial nerve. The artery and vein are in deeper layers and in medial aspect of the popliteal triangle. So you see the nerves are barely 1.5 cm below the skin surface whereas the vascular structures are sitting quite deep. So you don't require a longer needle for this block, right? when coming from the posterior approach. As I move the transducer upwards, I can see the tibial and common peroneal nerves converging until they become one big hyperechoic mass. This is the sciatic nerve. So we just saw the sciatic and how it bifurcates into tibial and common peroneal. Now moving the probe down again right below the bifurcation of sciatic where the tibial and common peroneal moves apart. You can visualize a white sheath covering around these nerves. This is the locus sheath. Let's finally do a popliteal block. Remember when examiner asks you to describe the steps, start with two key points in every block. Number one, consent of the patient. And number two, a crash trolley. And all the facilities should be available for local anesthesia systemic toxicity. Okay then, first thing first, the patient position. So, can be prone position, lateral position with pillow between the knees or supine as well for lateral or medial approaches. Next up, the approach. The nerves can be approached by the needle medially or posteriorly or laterally. Thirdly, the transducer probe. Use a linear high frequency one, better resolution, lesser penetration. Next up, the nerve stimulating needle. Use small 5 cm one. You can see markings on it for every centimeter, right? Next is the nerve stimulator itself and the technique. So I use B bronze nerve stimulator. Textbook technique says start at 1 milliampere currents and when you are near the nerve, lower the currents to until 0.4 milliampere. But I use New York Society of Regional Anesthesia technique. I keep the current at 0.5 milliamperes. Since we are already visualizing the nerve under ultrasound, so why use high currents, right? Always tilt the probe a little downwards for better visualization of nerve structures. So we have already discussed here on the screen, you can see laterally bicep femoris, medially semitendinosis and semimembranosis. Always identify artery and vein. You can utilize the color Doppler on ultrasound for that. But if your ultrasound machine doesn't have that function, press and release on the calf muscles and you can identify the closing and opening of the popliteal vein on screen. Moving the transducer upwards, you can see the joining of common peroneal and tibial nerves. So both have joined now to form sciatic nerve. Now moving the probe downwards and I can see the nerves and their epineural hyperechoic sheath. I can target this point for block. This would be the proximal site, right? But for learning purposes today, we will move the probe distally and target the tibial and common peroneal nerves separately. Now diverging the tibial and peroneal nerves further away by moving the probe downwards so the nerves are separate now. The tibial and this is common peroneal. Entering the needle now. I will target laterally placed common peroneal nerve first as I get closer to the nerve with 0.5 milliampere current. So the twitch is here. If you can see it again slowly, this is a version of the foot. 
We discussed eversion is the function of branch of common peroneal nerve, the superficial peroneal nerve. Now slowly I withdraw the needle millimeter by millimeter until the twitch disappears. There, perfect. Okay then, aspirate and give 10 cc of 0.5% bupicane. You can see the dark hypoechoic local spread around the nerve. For perfect place, see two things during this spread. Number one, the nerve bundle getting pushed away and number two, the nerve getting compressed. Slow motion of the spread. Next, keeping the needle inside, I will direct it towards the tibial nerve now. As I get closer to the tibial nerve with 0.5 mA current, the calf gastrocnemius muscle twitches. Apologies for not showing here the plantar flexion. It was there but I think we were just over excited to see the calf muscle doing that. So showing this in slow motion, now withdrawing the needle millimeter by millimeter until no twitch is there. There. Perfect. Aspirate, give 10 cc more. Wait, let me confirm the twitch again. Now moving the needle towards the tibial nerve and there is the twitch. Now withdrawing again and the twitch is gone right there. Aspirate again and give the local perfect. The tibial nerve getting displaced and compressed by the local. So this is the picture from the surgery under popliteal nerve block. That's it for today. Any query, drop a comment and I'll see you next time. Take care.